Because that text sets the foundation for today's spiritual journey in our life entitled, You Are Not Alone. There was a little boy who was afraid of the dark. Afraid to be all alone outside in the darkness. And one night his mother told him, Honey, would you go out to the back porch? And would you bring in the broom? The little boy turned to his mother and said, oh, Mama, I don't want to go out there. It's, it's dark outside. I don't want to be out in the dark all alone. And the mother smiled reassuringly at her son. Oh, honey, you don't have to be afraid of the dark. You see, God is out there. God will look after, out for you. God will protect you. The little boy looked at his mother real hard and said, Mom, are you sure God is out there? Yes, I'm sure. God is everywhere. And God is always ready to help you when you need that help. The little boy thought for a moment. Then it took a minute and he went to that back door and he turned the handle, cracked it open just a little bit and thought about stepping out on that porch all alone and simply said, God, if you're out there, would you please hand me the broom? What is it about this season of Halloween and that we think about all the scary darkness? We think about darkness and being alone. And we think somehow that when we're separated from everything in the world and we're all alone by ourselves, it's even more frightening and terrifying. Why is it when you go to one of those haunted houses, and I know many of you have, and you've shared stories in years gone by, and probably will go to one in the future just to have this wonderful moment of excitement and exhilaration and adrenaline fix. Why is it they try to separate you from the groups? Because trust me, when we're in a group, what do we do in those dark spaces? We grab onto one another, don't we? We hold onto someone's hand and we squeeze it so hard as if we're gonna crack walnuts. We just wanna hold on, we grab onto someone's shirt and say, don't leave me alone. You know, we go along with one another and we're terrified and we're frightened and afraid because we're thinking to be alone in the darkness would be the worst place in our lives. We think to be alone is really difficult and scary. We're fearful of what it would be like to go it alone. Well, here's the amazing thing that the psalmist writes for us in this beautiful passage. It's very symbolic in its writing, and so sometimes we're not that comfortable with all the symbolism. We may not understand it, but look at these wonderful word pictures that are painted. You who live in the shadow or the shelter of the Most High, when you dwell in the shadow or the shelter of the divine, of the wonderful understanding of infinite possibilities, when you come to that place and you abide there, well, what do you find? A refuge, a fortress. My God, whom I trust, who I believe in 100% and affirm constantly, the Holy One is going to be a deliverer or a way maker and one who is going to make the way clear for your whole life and your journey from any kind of thing that may come against us that may be of negativity or negative energy or negative uh, uh, un unfolding in our lives in some way that we might want to buy into fear or being alone. And I love this word picture. I love it. Picture this now. For the text goes on to say, God will cover you with divine feathers of flight. In other words, the God is going to help you, enable you to soar, to rise up, to be like on wings of a great eagle and to fly across, uh, to soar into new heights of possibilities and under the wings of the Almighty. You're going to find refuge. Also, this symbolism of being protected, that you're in this covering of this wonderful wisdom, infinite possibility of God is all around us where nothing can come against us. And though a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but nothing's going to come near you. Here's the psalmist's concept for our lives as it paints this beautiful picture of what it's all like, what it's like for us, what God is wanting to do for us and through us and in us. Because there are some amazing things that all that God is, is present for you. And all that God is, is present with you. And all that God is, is present on your behalf. Wow. Now, who's afraid to be alone? Ready to step out on that porch and ask for the broom yourself? You see how it is when we understand the comfort that this text is, brings to us and the knowledge and insight. What it's saying is when we rise to a new awareness of understanding, when we lift up our eyes off of the things of this world and begin to look into the realm 
of the divine. When we understand our, our consciousness raises up from all the cares and concerns of this world, suddenly something happens to us. We scale some new heights. We go to another level. How many remember singing the chorus, I'm going to another level? We sang it over and over again, and what did we say? We were proclaiming, we're moving to another level. And then when we get there, some of us are like, oh, wait a minute, I don't know if I want to go to that another level. We proclaimed it. We said we're going there. We said we're headed there. We're moving to a new level of understanding and consciousness and full awareness of what God has for us. We're rising up to something wonderful. Here's a key thing for you to learn in this lesson. As we rise, something wonderful transpires, in, transpires within our lives. Years ago, I lived in Kenya and later on in Tanzania. James Reese just came back from Kenya. A wonderful opportunity to work with a mission group there. James, give us a wave so everybody sees who you are. And you can ask James all about his African adventure and the wonderful work that he did in the last couple of weeks in East Africa going back to some of the familiar stomping grounds of my childhood. And uh, one of the things is nearby is this wonderful mountain called Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro, there are many people who climb to the heights of it, but there's some climbing tips that you must know. That when you're going up the mountain and you're scaling the heights, there's one thing that you need to do, that you must always at nightfall go a little higher before you go to sleep and then come back down. It's a principle that once you've gone a little higher, you climatize yourself to that which is yet to come, that which is about to happen tomorrow in the heights, that which is going to unfold for you in the next day. So your body is already preparing for what's coming next. And then you walk back down to the campsite and go to sleep. So it's like rising and then coming down and rising again and coming down. And so it is in the journey of our spiritual lives that when we rise to a new awareness of what God has for us, and our eyes are fully open, we can sort of rest in the day-to-day -day journey and sleep well, knowing that we are climatized to possibilities of what God has in store for us. We're not in that journey alone because the presence is with us. And when we're all caught up in the awareness that the spiritual laws of God are all around us and at work in us, through us, all about around us on our behalf, amazing things happen. How many of you are familiar with the author John Bunyan? He wrote the classic Pilgrim's Progress, a Christian allegory, a story that became a classic in 1678. But it's been told and shared over and over again, and many people have read this uh, classic. And the essence is that when you're moving forward, when you're walking with God, when you're climbing to new heights, when you're going to another level, burdens drop. They just drop. They fall off. Burdens drop our sh from our shoulders as we scale the heights of understanding spiritual truths. Why? Because we know that, wow, I don't need to carry this. There's a spiritual law that says, what you sow, you reap. When I walk in the law of generosity, I know that it comes back to me. That says, the wonderful teaching of Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount that calls us, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be mercy, receive mercy. Meaning that which you sow, you reap. When you're in the law of giving, whatever you share out, it comes back to you. And isn't that wonderful to know that you're not alone because you can shift to that wonderful knowledge and understanding of the very promises of God that are there to help carry you through. And as we climb higher and as we rise in faith and trust and true awareness, those burdens that we seem to carry all alone, it's says, wow, I got so much on my back. I'm carrying so much. I'm responsible for so much. We walk in sort of places of fear with them. And they fall away when we come into new understanding and new awareness in our lives. Well, this happens. Awareness happens when you're in spiritual communion with God. Ooh. How wonderful it is. Have you talked with God? Have you allowed God to talk with you? Have you been in that centered space today? Have you taken time out in your early morning, in your beginnings of that new day that's afforded to you to spend time with God? When we identify with, when we embody God's presence in full awareness, there's something happens that is so amazing. A consciousness rises. We become more and more aware that God is present and our journey is not alone. But that which is the divine is within us, flowing through us, all about us, all around us. We are not alone ever, for we're always walking. Scripture says, 
I will never leave you nor forsake you. So just when you think you're alone, you remember that wonderful presence, the divine wisdom of God has never left you, always with you, carrying you through each and everything. Now, when we go to God in this wonderful affirmative prayer that says, I know that I know that I know that I know God is here, that presence, that wisdom, I'm enacting it, and I'm living as if now, as I move forward in my world, prayer shifts the burden by entering into this wonderful consciousness of a partnership with the divine. You're not alone. You have a partner, a partner journeying with you through this whole walk of life. But when we pray in these ways that are sort of asking, begging, hoping, pleading, trying to manipulate God, well, you know what you're doing? You're still carrying the burden. Because you got this burden saying, oh, I've got a financial challenge, and oh, I've got this challenge, and I've got that challenge, and I'm saying, oh, God, you don't see how heavy my burdens are, and I'm hoping maybe, kind of, would you please, maybe, are you listening, God? You see, that kind of prayer says you're still holding on. But when we pray in the affirmative, what we're actually doing is we're praying and saying, I know that God is making a way. You've shifted the burden, haven't you? You're not caring anymore. You're affirming now in the principles that I know the divine is wisdom is mine. And I know that guidance and direction are mine. I know that all truth is mine. And everything that is there it is liberating me and setting me free. I'm not carrying this burden alone anymore. For when we pray affirming, knowing, and claiming, this shift happens. And we are embracing this wonderful partnership. Because life, life is meant to be a partnership. We live in a world that is constantly speaks of going it alone. There's a lot of things in our world that talk about how important it is. You know, we sing that song, I did it my way. You know, and we think it's all about us and our way and how we do it and, and our individuality. Sometimes we get so focused. We think of that we're all alone in this and we separate ourselves in our theology and our thinking and our way of outlook in life. We really think we're all alone. We're never alone for that wonderful divine presence is there. And when we keep echoing these ideas of some sort of separation in our spiritual life, we find ourselves in these depressing moments of despair. We find ourselves feeling overburdened. We find ourselves weighed down with the cares of the world. The divine wisdom, the infinite possibilities that we call God is there and saying, I'm partnering with you because I am working in and through you. And that which is mine is yours. And that which is you are, is mine. And we have this wonderful, wonderful awareness that we're not journeying this journey alone. The beautiful passage from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 has been one of my favorite. We echo it over and over again. And if you haven't memorized it, it's time to do this. Because it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust when you're completely trusting. It removes all your doubt and fear, doesn't it? You can't trust, trust, and be fearful and doubt. It's, you can't have it both ways. It's like trying to put one foot and the other foot on the other side of, of the dividing line, and you find yourself in chaos. You can't really walk. You can't be on two sides of the fence. You have to choose one or the other. Either you're trusting or you're walking in fear and doubt. It says, lean not unto your own understanding. Trust in the Lord, but lean not. In other words, don't put heavy weight. Don't be in the direction we used to sing this chorus, leaning on the everlasting arms of God. People would always lean when they sang that. Why? They did it intentionally to symbolize that I am leaning on God, not on my own understanding. I'm leaning on the truths of God, the very principles of God, not on mine, because what good is my understanding when the infinite possibilities and the infinite wisdom of God knows far more, far more than what we do. It's a little difficult place to come to when we actually say God knows more than we do, but that's the truth. We come to that realization that says, then why do we ever worry about the outcome? Why do we try to figure out how it's going to happen? Why do we deliberate all these kind of things when we know that the infinite one knows far better than us? So why don't we shift the burden, knowing you're not alone? Shift it and place it in God's wonderful care and say, I know that in this understanding that the very spir spiritual principles uh, the promises of God are simply at work for me. It shares with us this wonderful thing that when we do this, we are affirming that God is at work. I am trusting. I'm not leaning on my understanding. I'm acknowledging God in all ways, it says. 
Wow. I'm acknowledging God. So our prayers that are any way filled with doubt and fear are what? Not acknowledging God at all. I hate to tell you this, but when we do these kind of prayers constantly that are these asking, begging, pleading, kind of crying out, petitioning, beat your chest prayers that we've been known to do for years. And years ago, I was part of that same sort of approach to God, hoping that I could kind of manipulate God or coerce God into doing something because I didn't understand the very truth and knowledge. God already knows our need before we even ask. That God's presence is there in infinite wisdom. So I affirm instead that I know that God is at work. You see, when we do this, God then has the freedom. The wisdom of God is directing our paths. The infinite knowledge, the presence is now leading and guiding and directing your path for you, unfolding and making the way for you. You see, prayer that raises consciousness, that comes into communion with God, you know what it does? It does something special. It ties us to a power that is able, ready, and willing to fulfill every legitimate desire. It brings every good to us to do for us even more abundantly than we ever could ask or think or even expected. It ties us to this wonderful knowledge and understanding that wants to unfold before us. For Isaiah 65, 24 says, Before they call, I will answer. Wow. Before you even call, before you even speak, before you even acknowledge that need, this is the God. The infinite wisdom is saying, I've already had the answer for you. And while you are yet speaking, I will hear. God has already heard before you even form the words. The infinite answer, the knowledge of God is there that God has for you that knows exactly. So trust, rest. You're not alone. This shifting of the burden is so important for when we feel isolated and alone. We're simply struggling against tremendous odds and we feel, I'm not up for the task. I'm not equal to it. I don't know if I can do it. How many of you could say you've had those moments in life where life comes at you with waves and says, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. And then you breathe in this full awareness that says, with God, all things are possible. We think about the future of First MCC. And sometimes even as a pastor, I'm thinking, wow, waves may come against you. Can we do this? We got a lot of exciting things happening around us. Our neighborhood is changing. Our location is changing as far as being annexed into the city of Brookhaven. Our world is changing and folding and the possibilities are changing for us. And sometimes all of that change puts us in a place where we're like, I'm scared of change. Change is something different. It's new. I may walk into spaces and places that I'm not comfortable with and I don't know how I'll handle them. And then we realize we're not alone. But in the midst of all change, in the midst of every moment, in the folding of all good, that very presence of the divine is with us. And we know that our burden is lifted. It's set upon the shoulders of the law. It's set upon the shoulders of the promises of God. That the burdens are shifted and the power uh, and some wonderful energy and speed come to us. The joy floods the imagination. And we're now filled with anticipation that says, I know that these spiritual laws that are there, that are very promises, that are the very essence and describe who and what God is, that's where I've set everything and I've rested everything. There's an old chorus grow up with standing on the promises of God. Ever remember that hymn? Standing on the promises of God. Mm -hmm. We remember it, we claim it. You, some of you already sung it in your mind. You finished the phrase, you know this wonderful hymn. Standing on the spiritual laws that say that which you give comes back to you. That which you share in faith comes back to you. As you believe, so it is you, you receive. And that as you are claiming and that what you're attracting and desiring with your heart is coming to you. These are the divine laws. These are the very promises of God. That's what you say you're standing on. That's the foundation that you put your feet on firm that when the winds of the world come against you, you know that you know that you know and you simply affirm, God is at work. God is at work. 
Something wonderful is unfolding. Something good is happening. I have a best friend who calls or texts or leaves email messages or Facebook notes that simply say, psst, something wonderful is happening. And she does it in this simple way with a psst, as if it's a sweet whisper, as if it is the very voice of God. That no matter what's happening in your day, sending that text, calling you to awareness like, oh, I need to shift my awareness and consciousness and eyes open up. You're right. In every moment of the journey of your life, you're not alone, but you're in the midst of the unfolding of something wonderful that's happening. What happens when we come to this place, we've given permission. We're not in petition, but we're in the place of giving permission. Our prayer life now shifts from petitioning, crying, to giving permission and saying, God, something wonderful is happening. I give you permission. I know it. I welcome it. I receive it. Why? Because I'm in the shadow of the Almighty, as the psalmist has written. Shadows suggest protection. In our world today, we think of shadows as darkness. Places, ooh, don't go in the shadows. Something creepy could happen in the shadows. Don't go in the darkness. Don't go in those places where it's shadowy. But in the ancient, out in that hot desert sun, to find a moment of shadow was symbolic of the wonderful protection of God. Cool, relaxing, restful. A wonderful place out of the heat of the world around. A place of peace. It was that place of wonderful rest that's found when we move into this kind of consciousness. I dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. I know that that's where I am. I'm not alone. I searched the internet and I was looking at some things as I work with people who have faced depression, feeling alone, frightened and scared. Feeling that those shadows of the world around them are really frightening spaces and they offer these six things that you should say to someone who's afraid, depressed, overwhelmed, or feeling all alone and frightened. One, tell them, I'm hearing you. You're right, this sucks, you might say. I, I hear you. I hear your dilemma. I, I hear you. And I want you to know that you're heard. Two, you don't walk this path alone. I'm here with you if you need me. I'm here. Three, I believe in you and I want you to know that you're awesome. Wow, that's great to hear, isn't it? And if you're depressed and feeling afraid or all alone or overwhelmed, the fourth one is, how can I help? What can I do with you? Number five, I'm here if you want to talk. If you want to just walk through the journey of the day-to-day, -day, I'll go with you shopping. I'll get a bite to eat with you. I'll be with you. And six, I know it's hard to see right now, but it's only temporary and things are going to change. And even though you may be frightened and scared and all alone or even depressed, worried or overwhelmed, you won't feel this way forever. Things will change. I looked at those wonderful insights and that great advice, and I realized that that's what this text has been saying to us all along. When you're depressed, when you're feeling alone and you're overwhelmed and you're wondering what to do, that scripture is conveying the very same message that the presence of God, that these very principles, the laws of success, the laws of generosity, the laws of promise, of provision. That when we embody these very promises that you can stand on, those voices of God are whispering, I'm with you. I hear you. I believe in you. I desire to help you. I am there to walk with you. I invite you to understand that all things will change. And today is just today. Tomorrow may be different. It may be hard, but it's only temporary. That's the psalmist's message to you. When we're in the shadow of the Almighty, something as wonderful is happening, so I invite you to understand you're not alone. I invite you to climb to a higher place of understanding and to rest and let us leave our fears and shift our burdens as we sort of step into the place of God's provision and protection. I invite you today to know that 
very spiritual laws of God are at work and you shift everything and put them in that place. Laws of sowing and reaping, blessing, love and generosity. I invite you to walk this journey of life knowing you're not alone for we live in the shelter of the Most High. Would you pray with me? Holy Presence, we acknowledge that we are living and breathing and resting in the essence of the old divine all around us. That that Holy Presence is with us, making a way for us, is within us, all around us. Oh, and we're never alone. So centered in this awareness, right now we speak and we affirm this goodness for each and every one in this room that right now we know that we know that we know God is making a way in the midst of whatever challenge or whatever change we're going through. For as we simply shift our burdens unto these promises, we know all things work together for good. We trust, we rest, we lean not onto our own understanding. We affirm and we allow that wonderful presence to unfold in might and goodness. And we welcome it all with gratitude. We are not alone. We feel this oneness with you, O oh God, and we celebrate it now in this moment. And together we say, and so it is. You are not alone. I am here with you. I'm not far away. I am here to stay. But you.